I'm Johanna, me and my dog and books, welcome to or back to my channel. Today is another weekend reading vlog for you. It's Saturday morning. I've been up for a few hours now and finished a book and just started another one. That is the best feeling in the world. Well, it's not the best, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Is finishing a book that you really enjoyed and then looking around in your house or if you have any books next to your bed to see what will I read next. So obviously touching this in today's reading vlog, I'm sitting down here in my bean bag. These little patty cakes is taking my chair. I mean, she's getting all cosy on the chair. Say hi to everyone. Lucy's upstairs uh, next to her daddy sleeping because they're both still sleeping. I wake up too early at the weekends. Literally every, like mostly I wake up between five and six a.m. So. Hence, I've managed to finish The Damages by Genevieve Scott, which was an arc I got from Fair Books. It's out next month. I really enjoyed this, so I'll give you a proper review uh, later today or tomorrow. And so the book I've since picked up is a memoir. It's called Carrie Kills a Man. Um, and it's a memoir about transgender women called Carrie. Um, Carrie Kills a Man is about growing up in a world that doesn't want you and how it feels to throw a hand grenade into a perfect life. It's the story of how a tattooed transgender rock singer killed a depressed suburban dad and of the lessons you learn when you renounce all your privilege and power. Um, I got this out of the library ages ago and I haven't got around to reading it um, but I am reading a couple of books um, for the Trans Rights Readathon, which is currently underway, although I would recommend reading books by and about uh, trans people all year round. So I'll let you know, um, it's been blurred by a few people, humanist, harrowing, heartfelt. And actually what I didn't re realise was uh, Carrie Marshall, whose memoir it is, is Scottish, I think. Well, at the very least British, but They've already said it in Scotland and probably roughly around the same age, if not a wee bit older than me. So I can already tell there's going to be some nostalgic reflections of periods in time that might be quite nice to read. So I'll keep you posted on that. Won't I? Patty is just so cute. Um, so today, this, well today, this weekend, what are my plans? Quite a quiet one actually, Thank, like after being away for the previous weekend and then it's Easter weekend next weekend for you wonder why I'm tired I wake up too early so today I have a library trip because I've got some books to pick up I've got to drop some stuff off the charity shop I've got some books that I, I manage a wee free library like a basket of books in my in my work um, so I always take books in and other people take books but if there's books that have been sitting in there for like quite a few weeks that haven't shifted I normally take them out of the book basket and take them to the charity shop so I'll do that. I might take you to the library, to the charity shop. Since I'm at home this weekend, we'll bake cake. We'll bake cake. <laughs> she wants cake. Um, and the other half is out tonight for a friend's birthday. So it's me, Patty, and the and Lucy Lou just chilling. So maybe sit and have a read. There is a couple of things I want to watch on um, the telly. So a mix of watching BookTube, reading books. <laughs> but first, I'm going to drag my bum outside for a wee 20, 30 minute run, listening to this book which is Blindsided by Karen Slaughter, which one of my friends on Book Talk was reading and she was like, oh my God, amazing. I was like, oh my God, I need to read that. So got it from the library on Libby app on Audible, started read, listening to it. I was like, oh my God, this, I mean, it's dark. Uh, if you've ever read any Karen Slaughter's, they're dark, pretty gro gruesome, violent thrillers. Um, but I love them. So I started reading it and I was like, oh, that's good. And then I go to add it to my Goodreads as currently reading and realise I've read it two years ago and gave it four stars. So that says nothing about the book in all honesty. It says more about my memory. Um, 
I blame them in a book to read as opposed to just having a pretty poor memory. So I'm just carrying on reading it because I can't remember what happens and clearly I enjoyed it last time. Let me know if that ever happens to you or is it just me? Anyway, what I'll do is go a run listening to that because it's daylight so it won't terrify me too much and then come back and as my cool down I walk the dog goes and then you get your breakfast, don't I? Um, and then tomorrow I'm hoping the weather the weather's been a bit mixed this week I was hoping to do my first grass cut of the garden um, this weekend but it's been really wet so I don't know if that'll work out maybe do that tomorrow oh and I'll need to show you I um, our neighbours a couple of doors down had like some um, garden furniture in their driveway that looked like they were chucking away so I brass necked it and just went hi are you chucking that away and if so can I have it so I managed to get an egg chair and a wee bench so I'll show you it might need to spray paint it just um but yeah we've got a whole garden project happening this spring like because we started this like about a year and a half ago and still haven't finished it so maybe show you that if the weather so basically removed loads of rotten decking and are trying to kind of but we're trying to do it ourselves to kind of save money and um also a sense of achievement mostly to save money so i'll show you that but actually it's just reminding me i'll need to go to tk maxx to get a thank you gift for the neighbor for letting me have it so i may have a wee nosy in there always like their tea they've always got good tea oh talking of tea of course i've got green tea in my giant mug I love tea and I love giant mugs. So I'm just finishing my green tea and then I'll go run. And then I'll see you later on. Well, that's me just back my run, right? Look at the, right, you can't really see it well there. But there's no blue skies. There's no blue skies. I did warm warm up, went out listening to my audiobook and it rained. Now very hot and sweaty. Anyway. I have not ran for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks, because I didn't last weekend. Um, I just like to do 20, 30 minutes a good few times a week. Not like I used to do like 10Ks and 5Ks and stuff. I don't know why I'm telling you this, I didn't ask. <laughs> but um, I used to get really competitive with myself and just times and stuff. And now I just do it to clear my head and get my heart pumping that's all so I don't measure how far I go or just normally about it's probably about 5k maybe I don't know I don't even time myself anymore I just go out for a relative amount of time and listen to my book anyway Blindsided by Karen Slaughter it is a very good dark and violent thriller even though I know I've read it before um, and maybe some bits are coming back, but I fundamentally don't know the perpetrator of said um, murders and stuff that are in it. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm whispering that, like, YouTube won't pick it up. Anyway, time to go and walk the pups. Patty's not moved, she's still over in that little chair there. So walk them, all sweaty, and drink a bottle of water, and then have a shower and get to the library. Let's see what I can see. Having a good nosy around. See what I can see. I've still got the spring gardening books out. Always like having a nosy for my little displays as well. But I think I'll pick anything up yet. And I think these are ooh, the only one left. There's some of their new books in. This is me subtly trying to video while the librarian. <laughs> um, over at the YA section, let's have a wee look at the new graphic novels. I do enjoy YA, so let's 
see what there is. Some good ones then actually. Covers wise, based on that one, nothing other than covers. Duck feet. That is my first five star read of 2024. So check it out. Um, where I get to have a look at some of the books that are on sale. Look, there's Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, which I enjoyed. Didn't love Fair the Martian, to be honest. But it was still a good one. Um, and look at the prices. Like, the most expensive here is 50 pence. I was like, I know I'm on a book buying van. I know. But I might have a wee What else is there? Oh, books about Scotland. It's late Saturday afternoon. I've had a wee nap. I was feeling a bit tired earlier after, I don't know, probably after waking up at five in the morning. The kids are over here. Lissy is in the sunshine. Patty is also in the sunshine. So I'm about to get the headphones on, listen to more Karen Slaughter and clean the bathrooms and... Sounds like I have tons. Not really. Um, and Hoover. So I can settle down. Does anyone else just like a clean house when they're sitting down to chill? So that's what I'm going to do. But first, when I pop to the shops, I'm having some of my pretzel. Happy Sunday, it's a lovely sunny day. I'm actually upstairs um, stripping the bed, listening to an audiobook. So what have I done this morning? I've been reading more of Carrie Kills a Man, which I'll talk to you about later in my kind of end of weekend book chat. Um, I'm loving it. I'm like 120 odd pages in. Uh, then I went for a run because it's nice and sunny, although it is quite cold. So I'm kind of post run. But I plan on having maybe an afternoon bath. Um, so what I'm going to do is some housework, um, changing the beds and doing some washing and then make cake. So I'll, this time, let's, so not this weekend, but maybe next weekend if I bake a cake, I'll talk you through the cakey bit, which you can fast forward through if you're not interested. But what I will do is add the recipe to the cake I'm making which I think I might do a coffee walnut cake in the description below. I've also just started listening to Ultra Processed People which I'm listening to just now so um, I know like it's not it's not, a, it's not a die book or anything like that I'm very aware of never talking about food or that kind of stuff it's really toxic topic but I am super interested on just, which this book is about, just about the development over the years of our food industry and things. So this is a book that's not telling you about how to eat or what to eat. It just gives you an insight into our move into ultra-processed foods and the lack of information that we have. So then if people have information, they can make their own decisions. Um, I'm finding it so fascinating. There are some sciencey bits that I'm a bit like, oh, I don't get it. Uh, but like I'm totally binging it and um, this is what I love about listening to audiobooks so just finished Blindsighted by Karen Slaughter which was a reread which I forgot was a reread till I was rereading it <laughs> loved it um but this makes housework and other stuff fun that's why I love audiobooks anyway I'll crack on So while my cake's been baking, I've had a bath, watched some booktube. What else have I done? Oh, I had to pop out to the shop because I ran out of enough icing sugar. Anyway, here's the cake. Pretty messy right now because the icing sugar is still like, so, and it's lumpy because it's got walnuts in it. <laughs> um, it's a coffee and walnut icing sugar and it's a coffee and walnut cake, so it will look better once it's dried. But who doesn't like icing? Well, it's mid late afternoon on this Sunday. Uh, what was I doing? Finished my cake. I'm going to make fajitas for dinner. And now I'm going to talk to you about the books I've been reading. But first, 
Ja, det er sat. Hallo. Hvad er det senere? Oh. I started your sister in another room. There's nothing to see here. Okay. This is another room. Enjoying the sunshine. I'm clearly just barking now for no reason. But I brought my cake. I'm not going to lie. It's delicious. I went, like I said. Oh no. This is coming. Excuse the washing hanging over the door. And she comes. Hi, I'm with this. She's going up her wee stairs on the top of her crate. This is how she lies. I've got cake and then she'll be here. So, what I've been reading. Finished this one, which I started last weekend. I think I talked to you about it. Damages by Genevieve Scott. This is a four star read for me. It's a book of two halves. First half is set in late 1990s when Rose, Rosalind is in university. A snowstorm happens and her roommate that she's kind of friendly with goes missing. Then the other half of the book is 2020 where Rosalind is married She's got a kid and her husband is a writer who has been accused of essay. Um, the two stories are connected. I know you see the dogs over there, Lucy, but please don't bark. Not mid recording. Let me start again. Um, it's, I think Gen Genevieve Scott's a Canadian writer. I've not read any of their work before. It's like a literary thriller. I was gripped from the very start as you start to understand the difference between the 90s and 20, 2020 when the hashtag me too movement has been out and the differences in consent and assumptions about what is essay or not. I mean, of the 90s versus 2020 and the unravelling of lives and what it means or what you tell yourself or don't when these allegations come up. It's a story of lies, consent, of truth, of perception, of relationships, women and consent. I just keep saying the word consent, but you know what I mean? It is really well written. I really enjoyed it. I would say it's probably about four, four, four stars for me. The ending I'm still processing, but I feel is probably really hugely realistic. Um, this comes out on the 25th of April. Um, from it's, um, I do love reading. It's one of the indie presses that I'll often request books from if I can. Um, it's fair of books. Um, great wee indie press. And this is phenomenal. So if it sounds like story for you, I would definitely pre-order or get it requested from your library when it comes out. It was really, really good. Um, talking of libraries, I'm actually currently reading a library book, which has started yesterday. It's called Carrie Kills a Man, and it's a memoir by Carrie Marshall. It's actually set in West, sort of West Central Scotland, which I hadn't realised when I picked it up. And it's basically, um, well, about a hundred odd pages in, it's a very powerful, darkly humorous to an extent, memoir of Carrie's transgender story. I love the title of the book and the cover. Um, it's also because Carrie is grew up in the like late seventies, eighties. Um, lots of nostalgic stuff, uh, which I can absolutely relate to. For example. There was a section about the internet um, and I'm Gen X, so the last generation to ever know a world that wasn't didn't always have the internet. So any generation after Gen X won't know a world. It's like any generation after now won't know a world without machine learning. Anyway, I found this bit really interesting because actually it makes you realise, yeah, 
internet wasn't always that bad. So the internet hasn't always been a bit fire. The internet I discovered in my mid-20s had, mid had no Facebook or YouTube to drive me into the arms of the alt-right. No Twitter enabling incel armies to abuse women with impunity and no message boards radicalising vulnerable new mums. On my internet, fake news was the onion and trolls were music fans winding up fans of other bands. My internet also enabled me to inhabit a female persona. In some discussion forums, I did just that, but I got bored quickly. To be female on the internet wasn't as fraught as it is now, but it still invited patronising BS from blowhards and lots of unwanted romantic attention. Luckily, this was a text-based medium. The internet at the time wasn't fast enough for unsolicited pics, a technological limitation that I am very grateful for. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, before Facebook, before MySpace, before all of those, the internet could be a, a kind of relatively safe space. So you could use the internet to find people like you and people you could relate to. And saying that, I do think the bookish community and Bookstagram, Booktube, Booktalk can be places like that as well. But also, um, it's much more toxic than it ever used to be. Anyway, slightly my digress about the state of the internet and the world. Um, I am really, really enjoying this. Got it out library, no joke, in January. So this is one I've been renewing. It's not overdue or anything, but I've been renewing. And I think this is this is going to be a stonker. I've got to the bit where he's fair to miss heat at this moment in time because he is still identifying as a man in the book. Obviously it's she. Um, but at the point where he was still identifying as a man, he came out to his wife. Um, so that's the bit that I'm getting to just now. So super fascinating. So hopefully I'll finish that next week and let you know about it. Now, as you know, earlier in the, my vlog, I went to the library, picked up three books. One I bought, even though I'm technically on a book buying ban till April, but it's nearly April and it was 20p. First one is one from the that I had on reserve from the Women's Fiction Women's Prize for Fiction Long List and it's Kate Grenville, Restless, Dolly Mon Monder. I've never heard of this author before, which says more about me than the author, to be fair. I think she's an Australian author, um, bestseller, so clearly says more about me than anything else. But it sounds like an amazing, also look, look at the end papers, like the cover, it's stunning. So this is one I'm reading for a book club. All I know is it's about Restless Dolly Maunder is a subversive, triumphant tale of a pioneering woman working her way through a world of limits and obstacles who is able, despite the cost, to make life she could call it, make a life she could call her own. I think it's set in it's 19th century, so it's like historical fiction. It's not that long. Um, so, a work of history, biography, story and memoir, all fused into novels that suggest the great potential of literary art as a redeemer, healer and pathway to understanding, says The Guardian. So I got that one. And then, one of you lovely subscribers, but I can't remember who, because I'm sure I came back to you and said, oh, I've never heard of them. I think it was maybe when I said I was reading Karen Slaughter, or that I like Karen Slaughter. I can't remember. And you recommended this author who I'd never heard of before. Clearly, I mean, they're a best-selling author, so. But it was Chevy Stevens. Never heard of them. And I couldn't get the one that you had recommended to. And one of them I couldn't find in my library, but this one, never knowing, was in. So I picked this up today. Um, it says, Kathy Rice and Karen Slaughter had better watch out. So that kind of... Um, that kind of thriller. A 34, a th at, th at 34, Sarah Gallagher is finally happy with her life, but there is one big question that still haunts her. Who are her birth parents? Finally ready to hear the truth, Sarah discovers that some questions are better left unanswered. Her biological father is an infamous serial killer, a wanted man who has been slaying women every summer for over 30 years. That sounds good. Also look, I like it when it's kind of big, big text <laughs> for my eyes. And wait till you see the bargain book 
that was so you know how libraries will sometimes do like they'll unarchive books and they'll put them up for sale 20 pence this book was i am a mega fan of this author uh, so i'm slowly wanting to read their back catalogue and adding them to my library my, 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 my books <laughs> my book collections and this is one i've already read and I absolutely loved it. It was the second book of theirs that I read, and it is The Nightingale by Chris and Hannah. I read The Great Loan by Chris and Hannah, which I mentioned, see, um, my last video. I'll mention it here. That is uh, get to, get, Getting to Know Me, so the like, books that define my taste. Chris and Hannah is one of those authors I absolutely adore. Um, and I first the first book of hers I read was The Great Loan. Loved it. Weirdly enough, it was my book group um, where I got to know Chris and Hannah. And then this was the second one I read called The Nightingale. And it's set during World War II. Um, the story is, what it is about what it's like to be a woman during the war when women's stories are all too often forgotten and overlooked. This is phenomenal. I utterly loved it. What Chris and Hannah does really well is write strong, powerful women in different, stories, uh, different periods of time. So like this one... Set in World War Two, Four Winds is set in the Dust Bowl area. Anyway, I didn't have this to my collection. Oh, look at it. 20 pence. 20 pence. I nearly went, oh, I can't, I'm on a bit buying ban. I was like, what can you get for 20 pence nowadays? So I love that. So that is happening. And I'm getting, um, I'm just looking at my neighbour who's like reversing their car. And thinking they're wondering what the heck I'm doing holding up a book and talking to my phone but it's good lighting so those are the three books I got from the library good that I've still got like all the other ones from the Women's Prize for Friction Longlist are still on reserve or in transit so I'm at the back of the queue I also put a, a, a hold on T.M. Logan, the author. I don't know if any of you have read that um, thriller author. I quite like his thrillers. Good, mostly good page turners. He's got a new one called The Dream House out. And uh, I got put on the reserve list for that. Although the librarian says, oh, I've got my reserve on for that too. And I was like, oh. I was like, well, hopefully I'm not too far behind you. And she put me on. She was like, you're miles down the list still. So. I was like, just as well, I've got plenty of books to be reading. Anyway, look at me, I've got my, my bee mug again. Have I had this one before? Anyway, I'm having my Rebos Roibus tea. And I'm sure there's probably something I said earlier that I was going to tell you about books. That I've got, but that, that is me for just now. What I'm going to do is go and try and reteach myself cross stitch because I've been reading oh actually no there's a couple of things I'm teaching my, reteaching myself cross stitch I know it's not that hard right <laughs> for anyone that does it or has done it um, but I always forget if I've not done it for like literally haven't done it for years and I've got a pattern that has been sitting around for nearly 10 years that I need to pick up right so I'm going to start that again because Lauren in the books uh, one of my favourite booktubers who I watch all the time um, she gives me my bacon inspo <laughs> um, and my vlog inspo and also she's just so cosy to watch it's like watching the, it's like hanging about with a friend anyway I'm part of our Patreon book club anyway no that's why I'm getting it cross stitch again because she and her partner David do it quite a lot and I'm like I need to get back into that it's good for listening to audiobooks and distracting the mind so yeah, I'll let you know if that actually happens by this time next weekend. And uh, talking a lot in the books, we've got our Patreon book club tonight and it's discussing Kala by Colin Walsh, which I finished. And I'm going to be honest, I don't. This is mega hype. Like, it gets really good ratings on Goodreads. Um, it's like a crime thriller. Irish crime thriller, so apt for reading it in the month of March, um, given like Irish writers, St Patrick's Day and the likes. But I really struggled with it, I really struggled with, it was so slow burn, um, 
before it got going, I was like, where's this going? What's happening? I, I, I struggled to follow it quite a lot. I listened to it on audio and I don't think the audio book was bad. I actually thought the narration was good. Um, and then I was like, what's happening? Then there is definitely, like, if you can read any level of animal cruelty, like, it's not, it's not a long part of the book at all. But there is some very graphic animal cruelty in it, which uh, took me by surprise. Because I read so much horror, I'm not very good generally with that kind of like any sort of cruelty, but I'm a wee, a wee bit manageable. But yeah, I was like, nah, that's, that's not happening. Didn't like that. And then I got to the end and I was like, hmm, is that it? What kind of happened? And then I was like, this gets like over four stars in Goodreads. What am I missing? It just wasn't it for me. It was not the hype I expected. It did not meet the hype that it gets. So book group this evening, which I think is seven o'clock, will be interesting. Because it'll be interesting to see, because the last book we read was Sunny, which I actually thought was enjoyable and would be enjoyable for people that like romance. I'm just not a massive romance reader. It, oh, and that's that's the one that's Laura in the books book club that I'm reading. Restless Dolly Monder, so I'm hoping that's more enjoyable than what I've just read. Anyway, let me know what you're reading. I hope you're having or have a great weekend whenever you watch this. Thanks as always for watching, for liking, for commenting, subscribing. And if you like this video, please just subscribe and go and check out my other videos. And I'll say a goodbye from Sleepy Lucy over here. Lucy! I'm just not going to get up for you. And... And goodbye from Patty Cakes. Until next time, bye!